We are watching every piece of Star Trek media, and we are currently in the middle of Star Trek The Animated Series. Episode 11. Yeah, I can't believe it. Right after this episode, we're going to start Star Trek Picard, and uh... <laughs> we're watching the franchise on shuffle. Any episode of any series, that'd be wild, actually. Oh, yeah, that would be nuts, yeah, if we did like a randomizer type thing, or like a spin the wheel. <laughs> Just a random episode. Yeah. But in reality, no, we are watching it in release order, which is how anyone should watch anything, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to get jumping into episode 11. We're going to start right now. Okay. Captain, I'm getting some interference on subspace extreme upper registers. The star Cephas from its single satellite. That area's never produced radio transmissions before. Put it on the speaker. One isolated word pattern detected. If you accept intersat code as still operative. That's been out of use for two centuries. P-E-R-R-A-T-I-N. Computers show no immediate information on the word teratin. Continue research on the word teratin. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a waste of time, if you ask me. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> folks. His grumpiness has just been ramped up for this series. Yeah, I think this is probably year four or five. He's like, I'm done, guys. I'm done. I register a disturbance, Captain, as if an impulse just passed through the ship. Bones, we've just recorded an unidentified impulse. Any effect on sensitive lab animals? <laughs> yeah. Nothing, Jim. The gossamer mice shown. What the hell? Our halo fish is bright as ever, Doctor. Well, what? Uh, this species loses all color at the least environmental change. Well, that's one way to explain that nothing's changed. Yeah. Show these ridiculous animals. Sensors show crystalline surface heavily fractured by lava flows. Who do you think does Eric's voice? Uh, it's Scotty. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> My eye! Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, they run into so many things where they have no idea what's happening. It's like somehow they've survived. Yeah, they've been very lucky if you think about it. <laughs> it's like any of these instances, they could have just been wiped out. Anyone hurt here? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Lieutenant Eriks? No injury, sir. I'm glad he personally checked them, Mr. Eriks, sir. Mr. Scott, more trouble with the circuit work. What now, Gabler? Gabler. Yeah, but this guy's been in the last few episodes. And everything seems to have enlarged. Women losing rings have been... Oh. Uh, some are near panic. So are they shrinking or is everything getting bigger? Take us out of orbit, Mr. Sulu. These are awesome visuals, though, right here. Everyone being little. No reply to our Mayday, Captain. Engineering to Captain Kirk. Kirk here. How are they holding out, Scotty? <laughs> <laughs> With all that's draining them, the well will soon enough run dry, sir. Thank you, Scotty. Kirk out. Uhura, reduce Mayday signals. Cut down sensor sweeps, Mr. Eriks. Visual sweeps are already... <laughs> eyes no longer fit the opticals. And I can't reach the dial I turned five minutes ago. All the gossamers are out. And, and look, look how tiny they've gotten. Well, they're just like halo fish. It's, well, it's tadpole size now. Aren't all our uniforms xenolon? Yes, and they've all been shrinking proportionately with us. Convenient. I was thinking of a canon reason why the clothes aren't shrinking. <laughs> the computer will project the point at which system switches and buttons. Imagine how fun it'd be if, for a live action version of this. Build a like, bunch of large sets. Yeah, a large enterprise set. Request permission to direct phaser fire at the planet. Just let me set for 10 seconds, sir. Oh, shit! I think his leg's broken. We'll need a splint. Ooh. Ooh. Compound fracture. Is... You know that spinning thing you mm -hmm. use? <laughs> oh, God. oh my God! Oh no, they've been teasing that fish. Help! 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 Just swim, Nurse Chapel. Help! She's literally drowning. <laughs> I guess she doesn't know how to swim. How are you accepted to the academy? <laughs> but I've also got the miniature laser. Nice little touch having her hair be wet. Yeah. Energize. All right then. Eve, lads. Heave! <laughs> <laughs> I think that's wonderfully creative. To see them do regular day-to-day -day operations, but they have to adapt because they're that small. Yeah. The transporter beam apparently returns our molecules to normal spacing. All right, everyone's going to beam down and back up. Oh, Scotty, is it you? Aye, Captain. For the love of heaven, be careful where you step. 
I want to hear them. In the name of the Terratan people, I forbid you to destroy us, Captain Kirk. Either you tell me what's happened to my people. Here we are, Captain. We're down here in the Capitol building of the Terratans, sir. <laughs> I'm glad it's those two. Have you noticed that, like, everyone is, like, especially white in this episode yeah, for some reason? All, they all look like ghosts. Yeah. These Earth colonists named and numbered this planet Terra-10. Terra-10. Uh, <laughs> Our ancestors were too small ever to be found again, Captain Kirk. Wow. We had to build our own world. They had no other way to reach us except to make us their size. They didn't mean us harm, sir. Hurra gets it. Look at all those dilithium crystals. You're never gonna run out again. What about the people on the planet? Mr. Sulu, direct forward phases at the Terratan City set for pinpoint fire pattern. <laughs> Take this city and push it somewhere, somewhere else. <laughs> we welcome your people aboard the Enterprise. Captain Kirk, we welcome your eye upon our city. They've all stayed in that exact positioning <laughs> <laughs> throughout the whole ordeal. And relocated on a fertile and well-watered plain. Then we'll be able to call the Terratan incident closed. Oh, ending on a captain's log. Hmm. All right. Mm. Mm. I think the best part of that episode's got to be all the visual gags, you know, all the fun stuff while oh, they're yeah. small. Like you brought up, it would have been awesome to see in a live action, but probably just couldn't be done. So it was nice we got to see it here. How much money would that cost to build like a giant, you know, the the computer desk and all mm -hmm. that, and like Spock's area and ugh, the chair? That yeah. probably cost way too I, much. I <laughs> mean, I'm sure they could do it even by like the 80s or 90s with special effects, but they just weren't there yet. Yeah, another uh, good example of like, hey, we can do it here, why not? You know, they could have done everything super lazily and just had, you know, regular boring stories, but they're like, they're pushing the envelope of weird. It's like, oh, what if we tried this? And I like it. Um, Kirk, Kirk, this episode, like, it was almost like, he was, I mean, at the end, he, you know, came around, but like, I was getting kind of scared. I'm like, oh my God, he's going to blow this place up. I don't know why I was scared that he actually would, but like, I don't know. People talk about the animated series being like, oh, I don't know. So I'm glad he saved those people, but at some point I'm like, oh my god, dude, they had no choice. Sh show some empathy, but you know, he saved them, so. Yeah, maybe he knew all along that's what he was going to do, but yeah. he just, you know, typical didn't bring it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, the coloring was really weird, as you brought up, like, like ghostly white at some point yeah. for some of the characters. And considering that they reuse a lot of footage between episodes, like, how does that even happen? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how this all works in terms of it. the drawings or animating or coloring or anything. Mm -hmm. Why this one episode, so many people would be ghostly white. It's kind of weird. Um, but I also liked the explanation and the reveal of the Terratons. Um, it was neat that it was, again, it wasn't just like this weird space anom anomaly. It was like, it, there was a good reason like this. These people were going to die. They lived their entire lives, like not interfering or, or asking for help. They just accepted the way that they were. And then they're like, no, well, we're about to die. So the ship's coming by. Let's, let's force them to help us. Mm -hmm. uh, I liked all that. And I liked like kind of the battle between like what they had to do. Like even Ahura understood why they did what they did, you know, yeah. uh, even though it did put the crew in danger. So a lot of like surprisingly sophisticated plots and motivations in this show. Uh, that even more so than like the original series where a lot of times they're okay with kind of simplifying it being like oh it's a space thing or oh it's a weird creature but in this they've really like gone out of their way to build these random one-off characters so yeah and uh, i like it how it's like they're a, a crew of like the first like i think part of the, i think they said it was like part of the first uh, space explorations and it was just a group that got lost and i like to reveal the name terra 10 like yep. group number 10 and and they just got lost in this area where they were hit by those waves like our crew was, where they just started shrinking and they just accepted that that was their way of life, you know. And the fact that it was their ancestors, yeah, like not even it them. it wasn't even them, yeah. yeah. So I, they've been like that for, for a long time. They don't, they don't know anything else. I wonder if they knew, I wonder how much they knew from their perspective of like, you know, what life for, or like their counter mm -hmm. or things. I don't know, interesting. It's nice that the episodes, like even in this, you know, twenty-minute cartoon, can bring up thoughts and questions about the lore. The lore. The lore. Is this lore accurate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're uh, officially halfway done 
with the series. Uh, it's been oh, God, it's going fast. <laughs> <laughs> been a lot of fun so far, um, and I'm excited to finish. We're going to finish it up in real time the next couple of weeks, but uh, in the next few weeks here, posting it um, before we jump into the movies. It's just been a nice little stop. I hope it continues at this quality. I figure if it, if the show is going to end up being something we don't like, it probably would have happened by now. So I'm I'm glad you know that it's for the most part. The weaker episodes, there's still a lot to like about them, and they're quick and easy. Uh, I haven't come across an episode yet that I truly disliked. Yeah, I can't think of anything I dislike either. And even then, like with this episode, you question something for a second, but, you know, it comes around. You know, it's like, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, each episode, like, none of them, like, uh, each one sparks a discussion. Like, very few of them, like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Like, each one you find something to talk about either good or different or you know didn't like uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's star trek that's <laughs> that's what it comes down to it's star trek yeah so we're gonna jump into the second half of the animated series uh coming up here and then we'll be jumping into the movies after that so make sure to subscribe if it's your first time here so you can watch all of the star trek franchise along with us every episode of the original series we've already reacted to on the channel uh and then continue the journey with us so uh thank you and become part of the target audience absolutely thank you guys so much for watching along with us on this journey that's it we're done